Today we're going to deal with types of solution sets for equations. So the solution set of an equation written with only one variable is the set of all values one can assign that the variable to make the equation a true statement. Any one of these values is said to be a solution to the equation. So far in class, we've only done one solution. So let's just review what one solution will look like. I have 2x plus 14 equals 10x minus 2. I'm going to separate these into two expressions. First thing I'm going to do, we have variables on both sides. So we're going to try and get the variables to the left side. We're going to do subtraction property of equality. Okay, that allows us to cancel the 10x and the negative 10x. Leaves us with a negative 2 on the right side. Over on the left side, we have 2, a positive 2 minus 10x gives you negative 8x bring down the plus 14. All right, our next step will be to solve for x. We're going to subtract 14 from both sides. Again, we're trying to move the constant to the right. Those cancel. We get negative 8x equals negative 16 if you combine negative 2 and negative 14. Now we want to try and undo this. x is being multiplied by a negative 8. So in order to do the inverse operation, instead of multiplying by negative 8, we will divide by negative 8. Okay, and that's going to leave us with those canceling. We're getting x equals negative 16 over negative 8 will be 2. Notice there's one answer. So that means that this equation is only true when x is 2. So therefore, there's one solution or one answer. That was what we've done so far. Now we're going to add three more scenarios. The first scenario is going to be two solutions. So that one's going to have two answers. Let me show you why. We have x squared minus 4 equals 60. I'm going to separate into two expressions. Okay. On the left side, first thing we'll do is we'll try to move the minus 4 by doing the opposite. We'll add 4 to both sides, addition property of equality. So that leaves us with x squared equals 64. Now, we talked about inverse operations. We said the inverse operations, we talked about two pairs so far. We talked about addition and subtraction. Those are inverses. Multiplication and division are also inverses. Now, another set of inverse operations are going to be squaring something and square rooting something. So if I want to undo a square, which is what this is, x squared or x to the second power, we're going to square root it. And whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So we square root both sides. That cancels, leaves us with just x. Now, I want you to keep in mind, the square root is 64. If you put it in the calculator, it's going to tell you 8. But we know from last year that when you take the square root of a number, you should have the positive and negative answer as a result. So this could be positive 8 or negative 8, which is the reason you have two solutions. Your solutions are 8 or negative 8. Okay, so these are so far the two scenarios. One solution, two solutions is brand new. Now let's look at the other two scenarios. These are the more common ones you're going to see this year in algebra. So for the first one, we have infinitely many solutions. Let's see what that looks like if we solve it. I'm going to separate the problem into two expressions. On the left side, we have a distributive property. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 2 is 4. On the right side, we also have 2x plus 4. Now, what do you notice about the left side and right side of the equation? You should notice that those are actually equivalent expressions, meaning this is the same exact thing as this. Okay, let's say we didn't notice that, because this is a dead giveaway of an infinitely many solutions. Let's say we didn't notice that and tried to continue to solve it. We would have subtracted 2x from both sides. Now, if you notice, something's going to happen that has never happened before. These are going to cancel, and these are going to cancel. It's going to leave you with 4 equal to 4. So you need to think, if 4 is equal to 4, 4 is always going to be equal to 4. That's always a true statement. So therefore, you're going to have infinite solutions. What this means is that if you look back up to the original problem, 2 parentheses x plus 2 equals 2x plus 2, I can make x any number. Any number will work because really these are equivalent expressions, which I showed you in the second blue line here. Okay, so now let's look at no solution. Let's try and solve this. We have 3, or negative 3, 
parentheses x minus 5, going to separate into the two expressions. I'll do my distributive property on the top, negative 3x, negative 3 times negative 5 is 15. Bring down negative 3x minus 5. We don't have any like terms. But what I do have is I want to get the variables to the left side, so I will add 3x on both sides. And what happens is just like in infinitely many solutions, your variables will cancel, but they're going to leave you with a very different scenario. Is 15 ever equal to negative 5? The answer is going to be no. This is never going to be a true statement. We should put a line through the equal sign. That means 15 does not equal negative 5. Therefore, this has no solution, meaning no, no value of x will ever make this equation true. So over here, every value of x made the equation true. Here, no value made the equation true. You can tell by what you get down to in the end. If the numbers are the same, infinite solutions. If the numbers are different, or it's never going to happen, no solutions. So let's practice. Okay, let's, we have four examples here. First example, let's solve. We're going to separate our two expressions. First thing I'll do is deal with the distributive property. 15 times 20 is 300. 15 times x would be plus 15x, and that equals 420. Okay. Our next step here is to do minus 300 from both sides. I really just want to show you the final result. 15x equals 120. If we want to undo a times by 15, we'll do the inverse operation and divide by 15. And you get x equals, if you do that in your calculator, 120 divided by 15, you're going to get 8. So this has one solution. The only number that makes this equation up here true is when x is 8. So let's look at number 2. Number 2, I'll separate the two expressions. Okay. On the left side, we're just going to bring down 8s minus 10. On the right side, we're going to distribute 3. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times negative 2 is a minus 6s. We have variables on both sides. So from the last lesson, we understand we want to get the variables to the left side. So to move a minus 6s, we're going to edit. The reason we do that, those will cancel. On the right side, you'll just have 18. On the left side, you'll have 14s minus 10. Again, I'm getting that 14 by doing this addition. Next step would be to move that minus 10. We'll add 10 to both sides. You get 14s equals 28. And our last step, we want to move the 14 in front again. It's attached by multiplication, so we'll do the opposite by dividing. So our final answer here will be s equals 2. And again, it's one solution. So the only answer that is going to make s true in this equation is when s is equal to 2. So far we did two problems with one solution. Now let's look at number 3. Number 3, if I separate the equation into two expressions, I'm going to distribute. We get 18 minus 12x. Over here we'll distribute. Negative 2 times 6 is negative 12x. Negative 2 times 9 is plus 18. We're going to try and get the x's to one side, so we'll plus 12x here, trying to move this to the left side. But something's going to happen here. These are going to cancel. These are going to cancel. You're left with 18 equals 18. If you remember back to the notes, if the numbers are equal, that means all values are going to work. So what you're going to have here is infinite, and you need to write this for your answer, infinite solution. Now, you don't really have to write one solution for your answer, but when you have infinite, you have to write this. This is your final answer. Not 18 equals 18, infinite solutions. So look at example four, separate into my two expressions. Okay, I'm going to first get rid of the distributive property here. 8 times 5 is 40c. 8 times a negative 2 is minus 16. 10 times 32 is 320. 10 times 4c is plus 40c. I have variables on both sides, so we're going to try and move this variable over by subtracting. Those cancel. These also cancel. You'll have a negative 16 equals 320, which will never happen. It's not a true statement. So because of that, no answer will work, so you have to write the answer, no 
solution. Now let me just go back and review this. You have to write infinite solutions. You have to write no solutions. You don't have to write one solution. It's given that your answer here was x equals 8 and s equals 2. So really that's adding three scenarios. We had one solution. We did review two solutions, but we didn't do an example, but we have that. And then we have infinite solutions and no solutions.